Good day on YouTube, brothers and sisters. I'm going to go real brief with a devotional today. Um, I did one earlier this morning on Facebook. On I live streamed the video devotional today on Facebook. And uh, something that God put on my heart today was uh, helping the poor, helping those that are in need. I was reading a devotional today in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verses 2 to 4, where God says, Comfort those with the comfort that you have received from me. See, brothers and sisters, we need to look back in memory lane sometimes and see how often God has helped us in our past. And we're not to sit on that. We are to help those that are in need. James chapter 1, verse 27 says that true religion is to visit the widows and orphans in their time of need. And in the next chapter of James, in James chapter 2, verses 14 to 26, we're told that faith without works is dead. But there's so much more in the Bible that speaks about helping those that are in need and helping the poor. We need to remember that one of the greatest verses in all the Bible, in John 3, 16, says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave of himself. He didn't want to be served. He wanted to serve others. And as Ephesians 5, 1 says, we are to be imitators of God or Christ. We are to imitate how the life of Christ was here on earth, how we live our lives. Proverbs 14, 31 says that when we oppress the poor, we bring reproach on the Lord. Now, reproach is a word in, in a better translation would be to disappoint or have disapproval from God. My brothers and sisters, I have, by the grace of God, I have a lot of friends in uh, Christian churches around the country from Facebook to personal friends of mine through the years, the uh, 33 years that I've been saved. Um, and I still keep in touch with a lot of them. There is one thing that stands out with a lot of Christians as to why the church here in America is so weak. A lot of people that I talk to complain or grieve or are hurt by the church because of the lack of empathy or compassion for when they were in times of trouble or need. I believe today we live in a day, brothers and sisters, here in the West in America where comfortable, being comfortable and complacency is in. And it can creep into the church very easily, very subtly. And I have to look at myself in my own life. I was uh, recently talking to a Christian brother that I used to do homeless ministry with down in the city, in, in New York City. And I was sharing with him how me and others in my church were most joyful and happy at times when we went and gave out food to those that were in need. You see, it's been proven spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, every which way you want to put it scientifically, when we help others, we are helping ourselves because we're helping God. Jesus said that the two greatest commandments that he gave us was to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. Proverbs 27, 17 says that iron sharpens iron. Brothers and sisters, we need to be there for each other. A true friend a true friend is someone who is there in the time of need. I think too often at times, you know, we get comfortable in church where we believe that fellowship and our call here in life is uh, to be doctrinally sound, which is important. We need to have sound doctrine. But sound doctrine without practice could become legalism. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, the Bible says that love puffs up, but I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, 1 says that knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. I can look back at my own life and be very honest that I've been the coldest in my spiritual walk when I grew the most in my intellectual knowledge of the Bible sometimes. Um, I am in the re, uh, tradition of the Reformers. I love the Reformers, the Puritans, their doctrine and teaching. But we have a label sometimes put on us called the Frozen Chosen. And when we look at what's going on in the culture today, um, I was talking recently to another friend of mine who is a um, minister at a prison, Rikers Island, here in New York City. Um, he was saying that the Islamic religion is becoming more and more proselytized than the Christian religion. He says there's so many Muslims that come from the uh, their, their temple, wherever they worship, and, and, and they go to prisons and they indoctrinate 
these prisoners uh, with their beliefs in Islam. 50, 60, 70 years ago, the Christian church was doing that. The Christian church was going to the prisons, telling them about Christ, but now the church is asleep at the wheel. And I'm not saying all churches. There's many churches that are out there evangelizing. They're going to prisons. They're going to hospitals. They're, uh, they're visiting the widows and orphans. And thank God for that. There's ministries like Samaritan's Purse, Operation Blessing, uh, and many others that are doing uh, works of grace. So I guess this is a call for us to um, pray for our churches, pray for our leaders, pray for ourselves that we have more of a mission-minded uh, outlook on what Christ would have us to do. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, gave the parable of the sheeps and the goats. And he's going to separate the saved from the unsaved, not so much by the suits that they wore on church on Sunday, not by their elegant speech, not by how much food and comfortable uh, uh, feelings they had about a church, their intellectual knowledge, their good looks, their money, their fame, uh, their personality. No. What is going to separate us from the unsaved, Jesus said, is when you were in prison or someone was in prison, you went and visited that person. When somebody was hungry, you gave them something to eat. When they were sick, you went to the hospital and visited them. You see, Christian love, brothers and sisters, agape love is action. It is not something that we just sit on. It's not an emotion of feeling on Sunday morning, but it's something that should propel us during the week to go out and tell others about Christ, not only with our lips, but by our actions. A tree is known by its fruits, brothers and sisters, and God bless you all this day on YouTube. Uh, this is not to be a knock on any church. This is not to be a knock on any ministry. I, uh, those that know me on Facebook, I very, I try to be very careful and disciplined to say anything about another person's ministry, um, whether I agree with them doctrinally or not. I'm very careful because uh, I believe that the first place we need to look at when we're going to judge is to look in the mirror. To look in the mirror of my own life and then to look in the mirror of my own church before I can even worry about the backyard of other people. But God bless you all. Stay strong in the Lord Jesus Christ. Walk with the King and be a blessing this day.